Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. Water is a great way to add some variety to your park and the same goes for water rides, which is why today we're going to talk about the river rapids. The river rapids is a ride where you sit in a round boat that can rotate and travel down a wild river with rapids, whirlpools and waterfalls. It is quite similar to the log flume, but whereas the log flume is about big drops and big splashes, the river rapids is designed to go more slowly with more special elements. Because of this, the river rapids has access to tiny turns, which allows for a lot more compact designs. It also has a much wider track design that takes up the entire width of a tile. This has the advantage that if you bury the track one unit into the land it looks like an actual river instead of a ride. If you do the same in water instead it kind of looks like there's no track at all except unfortunately for the corners. The river rapids has three special elements. The rapids, the whirlpool and the waterfall. As cool as it is to combine these so that guests are wildly spinning when they're under a waterfall or something like that, unfortunately that doesn't do anything. You get a stat boost for each of these elements if you have at least one of it, but that's it. The spinning from the whirlpools has no effect and neither does including more than one of each element. This is a table with the bonuses to the EIN stats that each element gives. They all give around 0.2 excitement, 0.1 intensity and 0.0 nausea. The bottom row shows the combined effect from including all three elements. In absolute numbers the stat increase isn't that big, but the river rapids has fairly low stats so it is quite a large proportional increase. Here are the stats of a river rapid without any special elements and one with all three. Including one of every element causes an excitement increase of more than 25%, which is quite good. Because the river rapids has such low stats, scenery can also make a big difference. It's not important if you charge for the park entry, but if you charge for the ride, it's absolutely worth it to add some scenery. Without scenery, you can charge 420 and 540 for these two designs, which is decent, but not great. If you add tiny flower beds on both sides of the station, this increases to 520 and 640, which is a fair bit better. We're going to compare these prices to the log flume in a minute, but let's first talk about why the designs I've been using for this are seemingly unnecessarily long. It is because of one of its stat requirements. The river rapids need to be at least 200 meters long and it also needs a drop of at least 1 meter, which is the smallest drop possible. For every requirement that it fails to meet, all its stats get divided by 2, so it's definitely worth it to make sure that your river rapids is long enough. Back to the comparison with the log flume. Just like the log flume, the river rapids does not record g-forces, so you don't have to worry about taking turns too fast or flying off the track. It also cannot crash, so that's another thing that you don't have to worry about. Another thing they have in common, along with several other ride types, is that the number of boats is based on the length of the track and not the length of the station. Therefore, a long station like this one is quite useless, except for when you want the entrance and exit buildings to be far apart. Speaking of the entrance building, if you care about optimizing the throughput, you should always put it on the first tile of the station. Boats are only one tile long, so doing this makes for the fastest boarding. To further maximize the throughput you should always disable the minimum waiting time as otherwise you will have a lot of empty boats waiting in the station. Now it's time to ask the big question. Which one is better at making money? The log flume or the river rapids? The answer is... it depends. Here are a log flume and the river rapids that are as similar as possible. In terms of EIN stats, the log flume wins and as a result you can charge more for it. However, the boats of the river rapids have a capacity of 8, while the logs of the log flume only have a capacity of 4. 
This causes the river rapids to have a significantly higher maximum throughput which is more than enough to offset the lower ticket price. Therefore the river rapids is better if there are enough guests to constantly fill all the boats, while the long flume is better if the rides are not so popular as you don't need that extra capacity that the river rapids gives. Of course both rides are very good in both situations, so what I just said only really matters if you want to absolutely maximize your profits. Don't forget to add a photo section as well as it does make a difference. On this river rapid about 36% of riders bought an on-ride photo. With a price of 3 bucks per photo and 740 per ride ticket that results in a profit increase of about 15%. This is probably a best case scenario as guests can only own one water ride photo but it is to show that it can be quite significant. Now that we know how the ride works it's time to look at some designs. Most of the time you will be making a custom design that adapts to the terrain, but sometimes it's nice to have a compact design available that you can just easily build anywhere. You can find a download link to the designs in the description. This is the smallest design that is 200 meters long. Because of the tiny turns it is much smaller than most other rides that have a similar length requirement. It also features all three special elements and a photo section for maximum stats and revenue. With a maximum throughput of about 3000 guests per hour and a ticket price of 6 bucks it can make quite good money. As I said before you can add scenery and other decorations to increase the ticket price and thus the profit even more. Actually that wasn't the smallest design that passes all stat requirements. This design is much smaller yet it is still over 200 meters long. How in the name of Chris Sawyer is that possible? Well it has to do with the fact that the length counter still very slowly ticks up when the boat has finished the ride but is stuck behind other boats outside of the station. With the normal minimum waiting time of 0 seconds this design is only 57 meters long. However. If during testing you set the minimum waiting time to 90 seconds, the boat has to wait for quite a while outside of the station. During this time the length keeps going up and by the time it finally enters the station the length has increased to 208 meters which is enough to pass the requirement. After this you simply disable the minimum waiting time and you have yourself a very small and efficient river rapids. I don't know if I would actually recommend using this design for making money, as if you spam like 10 of these you need a lot of guests to maximize the throughput on all of them and it is also a lot of micromanagement. In most situations you're better off building fewer rides that you can charge more for. However, this design is quite good for increasing the soft guest cap. With 70 the river rapids attracts more guests than any other water ride which is quite good for the price of this design. The last design is also the largest. This design has a slightly higher maximum throughput than the first design and of course also higher stats. It's still not that large so you can easily fit it in many places and make some serious money with it. Whereas the previous design was the best for attracting the most guests to the park for your money, this one is the best if you want guests to spend as much money per ride as possible. And that is everything you need to know about the river rapids. As most water rides it's good at making money and also good at adding some variety to the park and looking pretty, especially when you build it into the terrain. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.